Hi again. You caught me taking a sip of tea before I start. The camera was quicker than I expected. Thanks for joining me again. It's good to be together, even if it's in this strange way of me being on video and you being wherever you are watching this. I put the bookmark in when I finished last time. And I'm, so we're now to the next story, and that story is called The Forgiving Prince. We had the story of the girl no one wanted last time, the story of Leah, and yet in the end she became the great, 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 or whatever grandmother to another child who was going to be special. This story is from Genesis 37 to 46, so it's a lot of chapters put into a short story. It's about Joseph and his brothers. You may have heard this story before. Jacob had 12 sons, but of all his sons, Joseph was his favorite, and she was a son of Leah. One day, Jacob gave Joseph, uh, sorry, I got that all wrong. Should I leave that in the video or should I start again? I got that all wrong. One day, so you're just, I'm just going to ask you to forget that I got that a bit confusing. Of all his sons, Joseph was Jacob's favorite. One day, Jacob gave Joseph a splendid new robe. It was beautiful and rich with all the colors of the rainbow, but it made Joseph's brothers jealous. They wanted rich rainbow robes too. And so I'll just show you that picture right away. You can see Joseph, Jacob, his arm around him, wearing his special coat, and then you see brothers in the background. They wanted robes like that, so they felt left out and unloved again. Then to make matters worse, Joseph kept having these special dreams. I dreamed I was the greatest. I was king, Joseph told his brothers. And in my dream, you all bowed down to me. Now I'm sure you know, even if Joseph didn't, that telling your brothers things like that isn't a very good idea. Joseph's brothers, as a result, hated him even more. They actually wanted to kill Joseph and do away with his dreams. And one day that's exactly what they tried to do. They tore Joseph's rainbow robe off him and sold him to slave traders for 20 pieces of silver. The traders took Joseph to Egypt and made him into a slave. The brothers went home and lied to their father, telling him that Joseph was dead. That's the end of the dreamer, they thought. But they were wrong. God had a magnificent dream for Joseph's life, and even when it looked like everything had gone all wrong, God was still there. God would use it all to help make the dream come true. God would use everything that was happening to Joseph to do something good. Meanwhile, though, things were not looking good for Joseph in Egypt. He was far from home and far from his dad. And then he got blamed for something he didn't do. And even though he had done nothing wrong, he was punished and thrown in jail. But God had not left Joseph. And so here we have a picture. The top part of the page is him being sold. You can see the, the fancy coat laying on the ground there and taken away to be a slave in another land. And his brothers thought they were rid of him for good. And then you see a picture of him in jail because he got accused of something he did not do.
But even in jail, God had not abandoned Joseph. One night, Pharaoh, he was the king of Egypt, had a scary dream about thin cows gobbling up fat cows. What on earth did it mean? He didn't know. But Joseph was a dream expert, so Pharaoh sent for him. It means a famine is coming, Joseph explained. There won't be enough food for a while. Pharaoh was so pleased by Joseph's skill that he immediately took Joseph out of jail and made him a prince. Now, back home, Joseph's brothers had, were running out of food, and everyone was hungry. God's special family, remember that's what they are, was in danger. If they didn't get food soon, they would starve to death. So Joseph's brothers traveled to Egypt to buy food. And here I'll stop and show you a picture of Pharaoh having a dream about fat cows and thin cows. <clears throat> So the brothers came and knelt before the prince of Egypt. His brothers didn't know that the prince was actually Joseph, but Joseph knew who they were right away. Joseph's dream, the one about his brothers bowing down to him, was coming true. It's me, Joseph cried. When they saw it was Joseph, his brothers were afraid. Because now he was a prince. He had a lot of power. He could get back at them. They had wronged Joseph. They had sinned and they knew it. Now Joseph would certainly punish them. But Joseph looked at his brothers and his eyes filled with tears. Even though his brothers had hurt him and hated him and wanted him dead, in spite of everything, he couldn't stop loving them. So here's a picture of Joseph on his throne, and you see the shadow of the brothers, probably right after they have bowed down to him. His heart, which they had broken, filled up with love, and Joseph forgave them. Joseph threw his arms around them. Don't be afraid, he said. Behind what you did and are doing, were doing, Underneath everything that was happening, God was doing something good. God was making everything right again. So Joseph did not punish them. Instead, he rescued them. He brought God's special family to live safely with him in Egypt. One day, God would send another prince, a young prince whose heart would break. Like Joseph, he would leave his home and his father. His brothers would hate him and want him dead. He would be sold for pieces of silver. He would be punished even though he had done nothing wrong. But God would use everything that happened to this young prince that was to come, even the bad things, to do something good something great, to clear out the sins of the whole world. Are you getting eager to hear and to know more about that story of that other child that was coming? Well, it's coming. And until we meet again, I put the bookmark in, Put the book away. I'll switch to my regular glasses. And I'll say to you, Shalom and serenity, till we meet again.